This morning I woke up at 4.45 to the sounds of scratching, scraping, and metal sliding across my floor. I have got this piège cache pour la prix d'animaux vivants, or live animal cage trap. And I think I'm going to put a few dollops of peanut butter in it. I am fairly certain at this point that I have an intruder. This morning when I checked the trap, all of the peanut butter was gone, but the bait tray was completely flat and the trap was not tripped. I feel like Tom and Jerry with this. It's five o'clock in the morning. I just woke up to the sound of scratching and so I knew that I hadn't caught the mouse. I just heard the trap door close. He was definitely thirsty when I woke up this morning. He like went straight to the water. I love that you made a little home for oh, him in there. My I did not expect it to be raining the day that I catch my mouse. And I just feel like if I put him out right now, it'll just be leaving the odds against him to survive. Some of you are gonna be like, you should not care that much, but I can't help it and I wanna help him. What do I do, little guy? The phrase, as quiet as a mouse, became more relevant to me this week than ever before. Even though I figured out that I had mice in my van while traveling along the Oregon coast, I'm fairly certain I picked them up in California when I very recently left my van empty for almost a week. Only these mice were so quiet that at first I didn't notice them. It just so happened that me and my friends had been planning to go back to California in just a couple days, but before then, I spent my time getting lost in foggy coastal forests, feeling my feet in the cool earth. I googled whether mice have family units and the very first thing that pops up says mice live in groups. If you have one then you very likely have a little family living in your home. And so I really think that there's more mice in here especially because I can't hear them at all. I didn't even notice that the little mouse had got caught. The only thing I heard was the door closing. Okay, I have an idea. I have a box and we could make a little like cage enclosure and keep the mouse in it for the next couple days until we catch the rest of his family. And then we could release them all at the same time so they're together and safe and so that we're not releasing him in the rain. It's been pretty fascinating to read the comment section in part one of this series. People have so many opinions on what I should have done with these mice. Some told me to kill any I found immediately using sticky traps or poison, while others told me that mice are perfectly comfortable in the rain and I should have immediately released those I found. Some were compassionate and agreed that live traps are the only humane way to handle mice in your home, and others found these little animals entirely disgusting or even scary. It's always been in my nature to love animals and to want to learn more about them. And I find that when we take the chance to learn about something we are fearful of or grossed out by, we are almost always offered the chance for a new perspective. Maybe I'll put some peanut butter on the wall so that he can like look at the wall. <laughs> Deer mice are highly social animals with a complex hierarchy of relationships within their communities. They communicate with one another, they forage together, they tease and play with one another, cuddle together every single day, and they almost never travel alone. In some ways, they share a lot in common with ourselves, as much as I know some of you don't want to hear. That being said, wild animals should always be handled with extreme care, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Sarah and Tori just went back to their van to make some avocado toast for breakfast. I'm about to make breakfast too. I just vigorously washed my hands like five times uh, out of safety. But I feel happy with my decision. I feel that it's very likely that there's probably a small family in here and I would much prefer to keep them all together. Tomorrow I'm actually going to the same place I think I picked up these mice or this mouse, whichever. And so I'll also be able to drop 
whoever I end up with there, but far enough away that they won't be able to get back into my van. Let's hope so anyway. The sun is lit up for a little bit. It's supposed to rain again in a couple hours. I can actually see storm clouds coming, but I'm definitely gonna enjoy the sun while we have it. Oh, and by the way, I think I'm making breakfast burritos. I'm using Beyond Sausage in these burritos. I usually don't purchase them, they feel like a special treat, but if you are new to a plant-based diet or want to try some plant-based meat products, I could not recommend Beyond Sausage more. They are carnivore approved. I have fed them to multiple people in my family who eat meat all the time and love these. They're so delicious and fatty and crispy and delicious. I highly recommend. I also just realized I don't have burrito tortillas, so these will be tacos instead. gotten away from me. For parts of it, I was just chilling, hanging out with Eliza, and I've been working for a few hours, and honestly, I'm kind of on a roll, and so I think I'm just going to continue doing this. I might hang out with Sarah and Tori later, but for now, I just want to get as much done as I possibly can. I feel like rainy days like this are the perfect day for me to just work, 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 because I don't feel like I want to go outside, and it feels like the perfect cozy space to do it. I caught another mouse this morning. I actually caught one last night, but there was a little bit of a wild slip. As soon as I tried to transfer him from the trap into the plastic enclosure, he escaped. This one is much faster than the first mouse I caught, and I was really caught off guard. This morning there was a mouse in the trap though, but I'm really happy that I have two now because it's very obvious how happy they are to be with one another. They are cozying up next to each other and being really, really cute with each other, which just, I think, reinforces the idea that these are very social, intelligent animals and they deserve to live. I am going to release all of them in the exact same spot, so hopefully, even though I'm going to release them in groups of two, again, I have no idea how many I have, hopefully I only have two, but hopefully by releasing them in groups of two, they can reunite with family members as they rejoin them. <laughs> I don't know, this is wild, this is a wild ride. Okay, I drove about three hours today and I'm back at the spot where I'm pretty sure I picked up these mice. And so I'm gonna find a nice little spot in here and drop off the first two. And I'm really hoping that it's just two and that I'll be done after this, but we'll have to see. <laughs> Despite the fact that these little guys are the cutest things in the world, wild rodents and other wild animals too can carry diseases that are dangerous for humans and that we definitely need to avoid. About 14% of deer mice carry a disease called hantavirus, and within that 14%, a few of the strains can make us very, very sick. Always make sure to wear a mask and gloves when handling any wild animals, and always use disinfectant or a combination of bleach and water to clean any nesting materials.
You can do it, little one. It's gonna be okay. You just need to go for it. I don't think this means that we should be afraid of animals like these, but it does mean we should treat them with respect, care, and caution, and always be mindful when we come into contact with them. Oh, I can't wait to wash my hands with bleach. Just kidding, kind of. <laughs> it's night four or five, and we just caught our third mouse. He's fast, I'm scared. I'm scared that he's gonna escape. He has to come to the other side. Corbin, he's going back and forth. Ooh, be careful. He's yeah. gonna jump. I'm trying to scare him. He's not coming this way. Tell me as soon as you see him coming out. Not yet. He's staying on that side for whatever reason. Like because I just scared him. No. Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! He's he's gone. <laughs> I don't know, he ran that way. So yeah, I was schooled by a mouse, it escaped, and it was very startling. And at that point it became crystal clear to me that I needed to release one mouse at a time, which in hindsight I know I should have realized a lot sooner. The night that I caught that third mouse, Sarah and Tori realized that they had picked up mice of their own during our travels. This is a disaster. We have a mice too. We have many mouses probably as well. Don't manifest that. <laughs> According to my mom's pest control guide, this is actually one of the worst years on record for mice infestations. And so capturing and releasing the rest of our mice was a little bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> the mouse saga continues. <laughs> What we have learned is that with each mouse, they're progressively faster, stronger, and jumpier. <laughs> and so I wanted to release them in batches of two, but instead I'm going to drive down the hill right now and release this one and hope that he finds his friends. He will. He will. They couldn't have gone far. <laughs> also, this one's a magician. We tried to get him out of the trap into the tub like three times, and somehow he kept disappearing and reappearing back <laughs> inside the trap. Which doesn't make any sense. The doors were closed and locked. Yeah, that was really bizarre. Was so weird. <laughs> he loves the trap. He's going to teleport. I'm going to bring him all the way down. He's going to teleport him and his family all the way just back into my van again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how long it's been since we got the first mouse, but we thought that we had all of them at four, and I put it out last night, I had no mice. Put it out tonight, and the first two times we checked it, there were no mice, but it's like 11 o'clock at night. I just got my fifth mouse. Will you guys come with me? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. There he is, mouse number five. We're gonna go drop off mouse number five where I dropped off his family. I'll catch a sixth one tonight, who knows? <laughs> Sarah and Tori have caught one so far. My mice are built different. <laughs> <laughs> so I ain't messing around. Hmm. I'm just kidding. Oh, hi, everybody. You want to go see your family? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to play hockey with your family members. But yeah. Are you up there? Okay. Hey, everybody. Right away. You ready? Find your family. There it goes. Wait, you ran? What? I didn't even see him. Yeah, he left. After mouse number four, I wasn't catching anything in my van, and so I lent Sarah and Tori my own trap, thinking that they would be able to catch their mice as easily as I'd caught my own. I am now the mouse trap expert, as I had a family of four living in my van last week, and now they have a family of who knows how many in their van. So it's really easy, Sarah. See how there's this little bait tray that squiggles? Basically, you want it flat when you're setting the trap, so that when the mouse steps on it, it'll trigger the door to close. Oh, fingers crossed, guys. This is night one. We came back into the van, it's 8 p.m., and we thought for sure there'd be a mouse in the trap. 
and I opened the door, looked inside, and the door was closed, but there's no mouse in the trap. After two nights of leaving it out, we still hadn't caught anything. I think what happened is that the mice in my van had left their scent behind on my trap, leaving behind the pheromones that mice use to signal each other and communicate with one another. So when the mice in Sarah's van smelt that trap, they picked up foreign mice scent, read Stranger Danger, and stayed far away. Luckily, Sarah had ordered a trap of their own that came the very next day, and the very night that we left it out, they caught their first mouse. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> go, mouse. Get away from us. Okay, there we go. Let's leave. Okay. The next day, they caught their second and last. It's 7 a.m. I couldn't really sleep because I was thinking of if we had a mouse. So I came to check, and we have a mouse. Mouse number two. Okay, go, honey. Go into the world. It's okay. Go on. There you go. And so, after seven mice, two vans, two states, and 10 days of capturing and releasing these mice, we are finally mouse free and can finally sleep easy at night. I still don't know to what extent these mice damaged my van. Everything is still in working order. And so I think outside of a few chewed up towels, an umbrella, and a destroyed toilet paper roll, I got off easy. But I'm just not gonna think about what my insulation looks like on the inside of those walls where they made their home. What I do know for certain is that I'm about to go on a shopping spree for everything I know that mice hate, which includes peppermint oil, cloves, and rosemary. So now that I think of it, I don't think my van will ever have smelt as good as when I buy those materials. So thank you guys so much for watching this wild ride. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Bye. We're gonna go and we're gonna show him his new rental. It's night four. Is it night four? Oops. We should literally make little signs and we should have like <laughs> the bedroom here. And when we make a little We're bed. never gonna let them go if we do that, Sarah. Okay, open it. No. What if we like constructed walls and like tunnel? Oops. He needs a restroom though. I slept. <laughs> <laughs> Pancakes, we could get a little nesting section for him. They actually had mouse, mice, mouse, mouse, mouse. I don't know. not being here, buddy. It's mice, mouse. Mice, mouse, mouse. It's mouse, mouse. Maddie has a new pet. Actually, five of them. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Like the plague and hantavirus, that's so fun. <laughs> Great. They'd be so cute if they didn't carry those. I know.